Hi, this is Judith Karakshon, Ian Manos Brilakis, and this is case 201 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of a balloon uncrossable, left main chronic total occlusion. The patient was an elderly gentleman with previous bypass that presented with non STEMI and pulmonary edema. He did have an angiogram one month prior that showed patent lima to LAD and vein graft to the right, but the SVG to the obtuse marginal was occluded, and actually at the time, there was an unsuccessful attempt to open the left main CTO. At the presentation, the patient had very poor hemodynamics with a very high array pressure of 15, wedge pressure of 31, and that is why the patient was sent to the intensive care unit for hemodynamic optimization and aggressive diuresis. He did have very low ejection fraction. And this is the following day when the patient came to the cath lab who had difficulty engaging the IM, um, the lima, but eventually using an IM guide and a guide extension were able to engage it. We also used the impeller hemodynamic support. Even though there was hemodynamic improvement, the patient was still fairly frail and uh, potential for hemodynamic compromise was there. So the target here we thought was going to be the left main CTO because we would like to perfuse the lateral wall. As it stands now, the LAD is filling through the lima and then retrograde it's filling the circumflex, but there is significant disease in the proximal LAD and proximal circumflex, and as a result, there is poor perfusion of the circumflex. So our goal was to open the left main and restore undergrade flow into the circumflex that had an occluded saphenous vein graft. The other option here would have been, if everything failed on opening the native CTO, to potentially try to recanalize the occluded vein graft to the obtuse marginal. So what we have here is a distal left main CTO with a blunt stump. The length of the occlusion is actually fairly short. There is a trifurcation of the distal cap. We have the LAD, we have a large ramus branch, and we have the circumflex. And then uh, the LAD, as we mentioned, fills through the IM. So our plan here was to go undergrade. The retrograde to the lima was not an appealing option. However, we, we were willing to try retrograde through the SVG. There's so much storage source in the IM, we were concerned for hemodynamic compromise. And then if that didn't work, go with undergrade dissection re-entry and re-enter into the proximal circumflex. So here we are, EBU guide, microcatheter. We tried initially a pilot 200 stiff tip polymer jacketed wire, but we were unable to penetrate despite the short length of the occlusion. However, using a Gaia next to fairly quickly, we were able to advance it into a branch. And when we did the contralateral injection from the Lima, this was actually the Ramos branch. So this is the injection from the Lima. We can see much better now the anatomy and our guide wire has entered into the Ramos branch. Of course, the next step here is to advance the microcatheter, switch the Gaia for a workhorse guide wire, but nothing would cross. So balloon, uncrossable. So what we did is we took out the microcatheter and then we used a Safri Pro 1.0 millimeter balloon, which is our go-to, the first step for balloon uncrossable lesions. And this successfully created a track through which we were able to exchange the Gaia next 2 for a workhorse guide wire. The next step was to wire the circumflex. So we tried to wire undergrade, but we were unable to because the angulation was fairly acute. So after multiple attempts, including using a dual lumen microcatheter, we decided to use the reversed guide wire technique, which we have shown in other videos. Essentially, what we've done here is we've taken a Sion Black guide wire. And what we've done with the Sion Black is um, folded it over about three centimeters from the tip. So the wire actually goes inside the guide catheter with the knuckle going forward, not the tip, but the knuckle. Then the wire was pushed into the Ramos branch. And then, um, and this was done actually using a dual loop microcatheter, the Sasuke, to deliver it into the Ramos. And then all we're doing is we're going back and forth and we're coming back. The loop of the wire actually selects the circumflex and successfully enters into the circumflex. After this has happened, sometimes it's difficult to advance the wire further because of the kink we've produced in the wire. So the next step there is to get the microcatheter, single lumen microcatheter, to go all the way to facilitate further advancement and exchange of the wire for a workhorse guide wire as well. But actually here we were, um, despite having the knuckle, we were able to manipulate the wire back and forth and advance it uh, down into the circumflex. 
Sure enough, the microcatheter would not go and uh, the balloons would not go. We used a sapphire 1.0 balloon again, but uh, despite dilating with the sapphire, the microcatheter would not cross again. So what to do next? The next step is to try something different. So this is a side branch anchor. We have a balloon into the ramus branch and that helped advance the microcatheter down into the circumflex. We also use a turnpike LP, which is a lower profile microcaster compared with the Corsair. Now, we still had uh, a lot of difficulty here, which was unexpected, but we had difficulty even advancing wires through the microcaster, which didn't make quite sense. But retrospectively, there was a lot of tortuosity in this point, and the microcaster might have been kinked. But eventually, using a polymer jacketed, the Pilot 200, we were able to get through all this bench of the microcatheter and advance uh, the wire again further down, which was a point of relief because we really did not want to give up our position inside the vessel. So we pulled back the turnpike LP, and then we were able to deliver the pilot, switch for a workhorse wire, and then we were able to dilate again the vessel. So we have now a kissing balloon inflation into the ramus as well as the circumflex. And the question is, what technique to use? And we debated about this, but the ostium of the circumflex did not have, I'm sorry, of the ramus did not have significant disease. So what we decided to do is do a provisional, but still jailing a wire into the ramus in case we had difficulty and we had to go back and uh, take care of the ramus. So this is a 3.5 by 38 millimeter drag looting stand, essentially standing all the way from the left main into the proximal circumflex. We had to pull this further back a little bit so we don't uh, stand over the bifurcation of the obtuse marginal and the circumflex. Stand was deployed, proximal optimization with a 4.0 millimeter balloon. And of course, like every complex PCI, especially left main PCI, especially in heavy calcium, as in this case, imaging is critical. So this is intravascular ultrasound, and we can see that we actually have fairly good stand expansion and stand strata position. And we go essentially all the way back into the ostium of the left main. So a nice result achieved by stenting. And, and geographically, the ramus looked fairly good too. There was Timothy flow, no obvious significant disease on the ostium. So we decided to not do anything else uh, for the ramus. Several lessons from this case. The first one is that patients with previous coronary bypass are often highly complex, both in geographically, but also clinically. For example, this patient had um, um, a lot of uh, heart failure, low ejection fraction, and poor hemodynamics. Very important is to not do, especially a complex PCI, in the setting of poor hemodynamics. When the patient came and the wedge was 31, it would not have been ideal to try PCI because the tolerance for anything happening is very low and the patient could spiral and potentially um, even have cardiac arrest. So it's always best, unless it's an absolute emergency, to stop, leave the swan in, send the patient to the intensive care unit for diuresis, and then bring them back the following day or two days later. And then, when the hemodynamics are much better, the procedure is much safer, the tolerance of the patient for the things you're going to do to the coronaries is going to be better as well. A third lesson is uh, the algorithm for balloon and crossable lesion. Here, advancing balloon and microcatheter into the ramus and the circumflex was very challenging. In the ramus, the problem was solved by the first line approach, which is a balloon, a small balloon, the Sapphire 1.015 specifically. And then for the circumflex, it was still the um, small balloon, the Sapphire, but also we used the side branch anchor with a balloon into this ramus branch and that allowed microcatheter delivery into the circumflex. And finally, for wiring through tortuosity, here we could not wire undergrade into the circumflex because of tortuosity and severe calcification. So what we did is the reverse guide wire technique, polymer jacket, knuckled, pulled it back, and it went into the circumflex. Great technique, especially for these high angulations, and something that should be in your momentarium when dealing with tortuosity. Thank you.